Uh, hi everyone, my name is Dima. I'm the product manager for Umbrella for MSPs. And on today's webcast, I'm gonna go through a little bit of the background about Umbrella for MSPs. And then I'm very excited to have Jim Lancaster join me to talk about leveraging cloud security as part of your managed service. Uh, we're gonna talk a bit about reporting value to customers, exposing key trends and being the virtual CIO, and then a preview of our upcoming reporting only role. I'll of course answer any questions at the end uh, and any questions that we don't get to we'll be responding via email shortly after. Quick background on OpenDNS. OpenDNS is the world's largest global security network. Uh, we have 50 million daily active users and resolve over 50 billion DNS queries per day from 20 globally distributed data centers. And uh, the number that I'm most proud of is the zero downtime since 2006, which is when the service was launched. We were built from the ground up around operational excellence uh, and use BGP and any cast IPs to ensure multiple levels of redundancy and high performance. The service that I'm talking about today is Umbrella by OpenDNS, which is a cloud security service that combines malware protection, botnet containment, and web filtering. And uh, as of IT Nation a few weeks ago, uh, we've launched reporting integration into ConnectWise. The core of OpenDNS is malware prevention. Uh, malware costs your engineering time and client frustration. So what OpenDNS and Umbrella for MSPs can do is prevent connections to malware distribution vectors, contain infected machines. So if CryptoLocker or Zeus or one of these other uh, infections gets onto your machine through another vector, we prevent it from phoning home, getting the encryption keys, sending data up and doing damage, and of course, blocking phishing and inappropriate usage uh, over any port, protocol, or app. And we do this with zero added latency because there are no proxies. The service is delivered via the DNS layer. At the core of our service are three value props. And this is part of the, uh, all three are really part of the umbrella for MSPs program. Decreasing costs by reducing the amount of time that your tech spent uh, cleaning up malware by over 50% with real world examples in the 70s and 80s increasing your revenue by being able to add web filtering as a value added service. And I'll be showing a little bit about monitoring as a service later on. And of course, improving your retention by having happier customers with improved uptime and the value reporting. And the first part that I wanna talk about is this leveraging cloud security. And for that, we have Jim Lancaster, CTO of Sages joining us. Uh, Sages is an MSP based out of Dallas, serving Dallas and the surrounding areas. They've been in business for over 20 years, and Jim Lancaster is the founder of CTO. Uh, Sages has been on the MSP Mentor 100 list multiple times, and of course now the MSP Mentor 501, and was also named one of CRN's Next Gen 250 for their uh, application of technology and excellence. Welcome, Jim. Hi, how are you? Doing great. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I think the first thing I want to talk about is really when you look at your managed service, what role does security play as part of your offering? Well, it's a, it's a core component of, of the services that we provide, you know, like backup and uh, you know monitoring and things like that. The uh, security um, is is a little bit more, um, there's more to it than you just, uh, it's probably the most complex of the components that we, or the services that we deliver. And our customers really rely on us to protect them to the extent possible, and so we, we really use every means at our disposal. Um, uh, it, it, very critical part of our service offering. Awesome, and one of the things that uh, we spoke about on the phone and that you'd mentioned was key in uh, in the way that Sages does business and the way that you guys have grown so uh, so much was standardizing. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that and what role standardizing your security service and all your services has played? Well, we've uh, we've been uh, we've been providing managed services since about 1996, and we've evolved. You know, from a small organization to uh, with one team basically for uh, providing services, and eventually uh, we evolved to three teams with uh, uh, providing services to our clients. And the teams were relatively autonomous. 
and uh, um, interestingly, the, the, each team developed its own kind of favored solutions. They had their, at the time, their favored backup, whether it was, you know, uh, they might have their favored antivirus, favored firewall, they, uh, and we allowed that to kind of evolve because that's, that seemed to be working very effectively. But then after some staff cha turnover, we realized that that had been a mistake that we really needed to go back uh, in order to gain some operational efficiencies and to, uh, and from the standpoint of making it easier to train the service <coughs> desk staff, train the, the remote staff, we really had to buckle down and standardize things. But you don't standardize stuff overnight. And we had, I think, three antivirus products deployed in the field, and um, they were working to various, uh, they were working some were more effective than others, and we were just getting killed with malware. Uh, and about that time, we discovered OpenDNS, which uh, we discovered was very easy to deploy. It had an immediate impact on our customers, uh, uh, immediate impact on the amount of malware that we were having to deal with. And it also allowed us, it bought us the time that we needed to go back and, and standardize the, uh, uh, the antivirus product that we had deployed across our entire client base. So it, Standardization for us, uh, it, we, we expanded uh, the antivirus and the backup were the first two things we standardized, but we, we really, that's to us is the way we gain operational efficiency is by making all of our clients, we, we employ the same tool set across all of our clients. I think it was Henry Ford that said that when he had his Model A, he said, you, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the customers asked him if they could have it in any color they wanted, and I think the Henry Ford said that you can have that Model A in any color you want, or Model T in any color you want, as long as it's black. <laughs> and that's really the way we treat our the services that we we deliver our customers. If they say they, you know, they would rather have a different antivirus, we we tell them they can have any antivirus they want, as long as it's the one that we use. And the same goes for OpenDNS; it's become an integral part of what we do. Thank you. Uh, that's that's a great example. And um, in, in you, you know you mentioned antivirus and OpenDNS. Uh, can you tell a bit more about your security stack and uh, what what you've done in terms of your security offering and the different uh, tools you use. Yeah, yeah. We start with the antivirus uh, at the endpoints, um, and working out from there, we've got uh, spam filter, which uh, which scrubs. Uh, um, scrubs email attachments in addition to providing some spam filtering. Beyond that, we have the, the firewalls that we employ. And then the last layer really for us uh, is OpenDNS. And they, all of these tools complement each other from the web filtering that's provided by the firewalls and then the antivirus, um, uh, both in the, uh, the anti-spam product and uh, uh, on the endpoints. They all kind of work in conjunction with each other. The idea being that if one misses something, hopefully this, another layer will catch it. And uh, as you and I discussed, the uh, uh, we had some we had a surprising and a great success story here recently with a client that had gotten infected with CryptoLocker. We OpenDNS detected some uh, botnet activity on one of our clients, the Knox staff. Uh, it was late on a Friday too, which is kind of interesting. The uh, it, we just had a late afternoon spike. I, it was about five o'clock our time. I called the customer and caught them just as they were headed out the door, and I said, "Look, we've got. It looks like we've got CryptoLocker. We've got something on three of your machines." And uh, knowing the way CryptoLocker works is, it takes about three days for the from the time that you get infected to the time that the uh, uh, the actual, uh, till it's done its damage, it's fully encrypted all your files and you get the warning. Uh, what I told the client was, you need to just turn your machines off. If you're, if we can't come get them right now, you need to turn them off and let us come get them on Monday morning and, uh, and, and, uh, and scrub them for you. Um, she turned them off. Monday morning we picked up the machines and uh, sure enough there was the CryptoLocker virus. If she had left the machines on over the weekend, they would have been done. We would have been going back to to uh, backup to to recover those files. So open open DNS in this situation really saved us a lot of work. Um, uh, CryptoLocker, interestingly enough, is very easy to clean. It's pretty easy to, uh, but the, uh, the the problem was at the time that the it had slipped through all of the layers of defense. The the uh, we use 
uh, uh, the antivirus product that we used wasn't didn't have the signature for CryptoLocker yet, and uh, neither did the uh, the mail attachment filter. So it had slipped through everything that we had except OpenDNS and stopped it there. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the keys there is uh, being able to combine that preventive layers and OpenDNS being both preventive and sort of the hardened outside containment layer. So even though the machine got the, the binary attachment, which is part of the email filter uh, uh, filtering capability, managed to make it through, we were still able to contain it and prevent it from getting that encryption key, which meant it sat there uh, giving you guys time to come in and clean it up without having any of the encryption take place. Right. And um, one of the other things that we had discussed is, you, you know, you mentioned that you have a criteria for choosing a new product because you are standardizing and anything that you do, you do across the board. Um, right. It, uh, it, for us, when we evaluate any, any product or service that we incorporate into our MSP offering, uh, it's got to do one of two things. It's either got to we've got to be able to upsell, increase revenue, or we've got to be able to contain costs. We've got to reduce costs in some way. And I really think that most MSPs are feeling the uh, you know it's very difficult to upsell clients these days. So uh, and you know everything we got a lot of price pressure on our service offerings. Um, and for us, the uh, what we so we we really look for. Uh, uh, that cost containment. And for us, we were able to get a, an immediate uh, uh, realization of, uh, re in the form of reduced uh, malware that we were having to deal with. Uh, the service desk was, at the time we implemented OpenDNS, our service desk was really inundated. And now I, I, um, uh, I don't think we, we deal with a couple of viruses a month, maybe two or two, two, three a month. As, uh, and we were doing probably more than that a week at the time. So we're uh, in terms of, and when you're on a fixed fee contract too mm -hmm. with the client, that's a that's a huge that's a huge benefit. Absolutely. So, um, in just to sort of summarize, it sounds like the the big impact has been uh, of of opening us in the business has really been a cost savings and being part of your core offering rather than as an add on. Is that right? Yeah, it, absolutely. It's. Uh, um, you know, we 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 initially embraced OpenDNS as uh, something kind of a stopgap measure to help us manage, you know, what was an unmanageable situation with multiple antivirus products uh, deployed at our client base and being overrun with antivirus uh, or with virus and malware issues. But it's since become we realized that the uh, uh, that it really adds and it's a very effective nut, uh, uh, and cost effective layer that we can add to our standard security offering and then now with the addition of the umbrella features not only can we protect the uh, the, you know, the customers on site we get the remote users as well uh, and we're using uh, the umbrella features also for content filtering uh, user user level content filtering so we're able to we're able to add some additional features that the clients have been asking for. Not all clients ask for it, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, for those that do, we have that capability to expand in that area uh, uh, very simply. That's awesome. Uh, well, Jim, thank you very much. I really appreciate you, uh, you talking to us today. And um, one of the things that I want to continue on is really following up on a conversation that I had with Jim earlier on some of the roles of the virtual CIO. Of course, ensuring operational efficiencies and making sure that the customers have that 100% uptime is key. But the other one that Jim mentioned was really aligning the, uh, creating an IT strategy to stay ahead of change and doing that on the security layer as well. And one of the things that we're seeing in the industry is, you know, work used to be a place you go. It was all desktops and security was around all about building a better mode around your castle. Um, at this point, work is no longer a place you go. It's a thing you do. People are working everywhere. I know I do. Internet connectivity is ubiquitous. Whether I'm on a plane, at the office, working from the coffee shop, uh, or even, uh, even just on a bus. 
And of course, appliance and UTM security doesn't really protect users outside the network perimeter. So you invest in all of these layers, but once the uh, users have left the perimeter, that extension needs to be, ex it needs to be extended. Um, what Umbrella for MSPs does is allows you to protect workers on and off the network. And it also means coverage for BYOD and unmanaged devices. And this is really important because if somebody comes in with an infected laptop on your network, uh, that that machine can update, spread the virus, um, or just start get instructions on sending spam and blacklist your customer's IPs uh, as a spammer. <coughs> with Umbrella for MSPs, we recommend doing both network level provisioning and using this lightweight agent. On the network layer, it's as simple as pointing the office DNS and forwarding port 53 to our AnyCast IPs and then telling us the public IP address of the network. Now, anybody connecting to that network is protected, has the malware protection, the botnet containment, and filtering policies are in place. But on top of that, we also have this lightweight agent. It's about two megs. All it does is it sends DNS up to us in the cloud. Uh, I mean, it also looks at internal DNS and sends that to the internal AD resolver, but it identifies the user, so then we can apply policy so that protection follows the user anywhere they go. Uh, and we've got pre-written scripts for Enable, Kaseya, and LabTech, and many customers who have deployed it using level platforms and Continuum, and it really is just a click and hit go operation to install it. The users don't notice it, it's fully hidden. Uh, and when I get the question of, well, what's the performance impact, we can't really measure it because it's below 1% and it uses so little memory because all it does is that it identifies and makes sure that they are still sending traffic to us in the cloud. The impact of this, of course, is improved uptime because you now have fewer infections, uh, predictive prevention and containment, and having this always on technology is really great. But then the next question that comes from customers is, I don't have malware problems, what am I paying you for? Which is where the improving retention through value reports and you know, combining those value reports with customer uptime comes in. Um, our dashboard has these great you know, interactive uh, reporting features where you can set date ranges, download anything, show what you've prevented, contained, what advanced threats have happened on the network, as well as trending. But the issue that has come back to us from our partners has been, okay, that's awesome, but I need everybody in my organization to express this value, um, not just the service desk, and really the sales and management team who don't usually log into outside systems, but they need the data the most, which is where our ConnectWise integration comes into play. Basically, we set up a custom configuration type with questions that we update every night. And what this means is that anybody, whether they're sales, uh, service desk, support, can look at this and show, oh, yeah, in the last month, we've blocked over a 1,000 malware infections, and we've also contained a whole lot of machines. And one of the things that I've got on my roadmap, and this is really in response to uh, what MSPs have been asking for, is that we're going to be working on ticketing integration. So if a machine does have botnet queries, uh, we can create a ticket right on the service desk of your choosing, bring it to your attention, and get it cleaned up quickly. And that's something that I actually will be working with the engineering team over the next coming weeks. The next part of, uh, of the virtual CIO sort of task list is aligning the technology strategy with business. And we also make this really easy to do right within ConnectWise. Uh, the other questions that we update every day are top domains last month, what are we blocking, and what are the top categories on the network? And this allows you to get some insights without having to spend a lot of time. So for example, and this is purely an example that I've got up, uh, and actually this is my machine, uh, I've got Adobe Creative Cloud going on here, this uh, Adobe, uh, ubisas.adobe.com. I should now talk to my customer and say, hey, we should get you set up on volume licensing, or instead of using those old machines, now that you're doing a lot of Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever, 
let's talk about an upgrade. Also, YouTube and Netflix are top of the list. Uh, is it time to upgrade your Wi-Fi? Time to increase bandwidth? What's going to happen as people start turning on that HD mode? Uh, one funny story that I've gotten from a customer is they started seeing this in ConnectWise and they had the conversation and the customer said, oh, that's that's mostly me and that's the, the CEO saying, so can you just block it for everybody else to make sure that I have great quality? Um, funny example, but it does happen in the field. Um, and the last part is, okay, so I'm seeing Facebook as a top block site. That's what the customer wanted. They don't want people goofing off. But then when I look at top domains, everybody's moved to Twitter. So being able to see this as you're on the phone with a customer, as you're going into a meeting, means you can have that conversation of, did you really want to just block Facebook because all of your employees have moved on? Um, and you can do this without having to log into a dashboard, without having to dig deep, just by finding this in the configuration questions and being able to answer it in real time. The next part I want to talk about is, just like Jim said, there's the uh, decreased costs, but you also, of course, want to be able to increase revenue. And for that, we have the per user web filtering, and that's included in the umbrella for MSP service just as part of the package. Of course, 60 categories, blacklist, whitelist, full customization with your logo copy or even your own URL for at the, on the block page, per user policy. Uh, with BYOD and block page bypass codes and real-time reporting, as well as all the reports that you typically expect. But one of the things that we've also been hearing from the field is there's some challenges with web filtering. Everybody's got a computer with uh, high bandwidth now expanding to 4G LTE uh, on employee-owned devices that the employer can't control. So if there's problem employees, they're just going to go uh, and pull out their phone and goof off all day. And the other part is when you start using technology to restrict, then the, the actual problem employees that you're trying to keep productivity up or keep inappropriate content down, it's almost a challenge to them. You start getting into this arms race. Um, of course, yes, web filtering important, but these employees see it as this, this game almost. So one of the solutions that a lot of our uh, partners have started implementing is really marketing this as web monitoring as a service, where rather than just doing blocking, you're really enabling the business owner to monitor employee usage. And the term that I really love is this trust but verify. So you're going to block the core. Yeah, you want to block porn, P2P, all these kinds of things that I wouldn't want to have anybody in my company have pop up during a sales presentation or have an HR violation, but also combining that with real-time activity lock to spot offender. And um, what that means is you're empowering the customer to pull up the dashboard, catch offenders in the act, see that somebody who's behind in their work is actually going to a ton of blogs. And it also means that you point out the one person who's who's really goofing off and not doing things, and word spreads quickly that the boss is watching. And you can have the conversation rather than just having people come up with a block page, which enables the customer to change behaviors. Um, and it allows the MSP to also engage with the customer on problem areas like that. Um, the last thing that I think is really cool is being able to live demo this with a customer. So you roll out the service for, uh, for security, but then you're in a meeting and say, hey, do you want to be able to log in and see what your employees are doing? And I guarantee you that uh, the customer will say, sure, of course I want to be able to see that. Um, and this is, of course, just an example. But if Edith Ham here was uh, was behind in her work and you see all of these blogs that, uh, that she's going to in rapid succession, you're going to go, hang on, let me step out of this meeting and see what's going on. And that enables that kind of management conversation. From a technical perspective, you know, this is the MSP console where Dima's demo, which is my demo MSP, has all of these customers, and my login allows me to manage any of them from the multi-tenant dashboard. I have this drop-down that lets me switch between customers. Um, I can also see all of my licensing in one place, and that's great for me. But if I want to grant a customer access to the dashboard, what I want to do is I want to make sure they're isolated. 
And by creating the user within that separate organization, they don't see a drop down. All they see is their org with their reports, their settings. And what we've got in beta right now is a reporting only role where um, this is a limited availability, uh, small beta right now, but we'll be rolling out early next year. But basically, uh, if you set somebody as reporting only, the configuration tab disappears completely. And we're gonna be working on co-branding that dashboard so it can become the MSP provider's reporting portal that the end customer can really go into, look at what their employees are doing and engage in that conversation or just scare people into thinking that uh, the management is always watching. So in summary, decreasing costs through malware prevention uh, and botnet containment is the core but we of course do have that uh, web filtering or web monitoring as a service. Uh, we enable you to improve retention and show the value of your uh, security service through the value reports. And for MSPs, we really have aligned our business with your business, with monthly billing, aggregate volume pricing. So if you have 1,000, 2,000 users that you're supporting, we bundle those together and give you a great price for, uh, for the entire package, the ability to manage seats on demand, add customers, delete customers anytime, day or night through the console, and with the roadmap of additional ticketing integration and um, additional uh, reporting functionality, um, we really pride ourselves in a commitment to partner success. So with that, um, if you're looking for to just to get started on a trial, please feel free to email sales at opendns.com. My email address is listed above. And now let me take a look at some questions. 